Hello, and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Karen Snape with Virginia Cooperative Extension, and today we're going to take a tour of maple trees. So we'll be learning about the different maple species that are native to Virginia, as well as one invasive species you may find here. And we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Here we have a red maple tree. Red maples are one of the most common and widespread trees in the state of Virginia. They will occur anywhere in the state and they are very much generalists. They will thrive in wet conditions. They will do well in dry conditions. They can uh, withstand shade, but also do very well in sun. They are widespread in our natural forests and very commonly planted as urban and yard trees. As you can see here on these higher and therefore younger branches and stems of the red maple, the bark when young is very smooth and gray, similar to beech bark. And then as the tree matures, it will get more textured and uh, regularly broken up and fissured. So this is some of the what the older bark looks like. Red maple very often has three lobes, although it can also be five lobed. The sinuses, which is the space between the lobes, is V-shaped, coming to a bit of a pointed shape at the base of the lobe. The lobes, the leaves, are serrated. So they're finely toothed all along the edge. And the underside of the leaf is whitened or a uh, very light green. You can kind of see the whitening here that actually kind of rubs off a little bit. The leaf stems are very often reddish along the top or the side that gets sun but will be green on the underside. The twigs are often reddish and not maybe at this time of year, but the buds are reddish, particularly in the spring. Um, and the red maple leaves out very early in the spring. Those red buds are very visible in the early spring as sort of a haze in the tops of the trees. And that is one of the main ways that red maple gets its name, uh, more so than from the red, red fall foliage, which is fairly common. Red maple is also called soft maple because the wood is softer than that of, for example, sugar maple. Red maple also has a lower sugar content than sugar maple, but can be used to make maple syrup. It just takes more of the sap to boil down to the right consistency. Sugar maple leaves have five, typically five lobes. The sinuses are rounded and U-shaped. The margins are not toothed, except for these occasional large teeth. They are blunt tipped pointy. This is the flag, this is the leaf that is on the Canadian flag but they are paler green on the back, not whitened, usually smooth, but sometimes with a little bit of hairiness or fuzziness to them. The buds are pointy. The twigs can be a reddish brown or just a sort of glossy brown. Sugar maple is also called hard maple. The wood is a valuable timber product, much more so than red maple. And sugar maple is the primary maple syrup tree. Mature bark of the sugar maple forms fairly large plates that will peel off a little bit from the trunk and uh, be a coarse sort of bark. These are the seeds of the sugar maple 
this you can see they are a winged Samara born in pairs and arranged in a U shape on the stem. Black maple is very similar to sugar maple. The leaves are three to five pointed, typically with shallower sinuses. So the sinuses being the spaces between the lobes, which you can see are quite shallow in this example. And the leaves tend to have a drooping appearance where they tend to um, sort of droop around the edges and curl down a little bit along the edges. They also have a stipule, which is a small leaf-like structure at the base of the leaf stem. So here that is at the base of the leaf, this little leaf-like structure called a stipule. Other than that, black maple is very similar to sugar maple. The seeds are very similar. Like sugar maple, it is considered a hard maple, so a more valuable timber species. It also has a very high uh, sugar content to the sap, um, more like sugar maple in terms of its syrup making abilities. Florida maple is very similar to sugar maple. Like sugar maple and black maple, it is considered a hard maple and it has a high sugar content. The leaves tend to be more strongly three-pointed. Those fifth points are a little bit smaller or less noticeable typically. The main difference is that the back of the leaf, instead of just being lighter green, is a little bit whitened and a little bit fuzzy. Florida maple is also called southern sugar maple. In Virginia, its range extends only into the southeastern and a little bit of the south side of the state. Here's a silver maple tree growing in the floodplain of the New River. So silver maples are very common in wet areas, floodplains and wetlands. They are also commonly planted or at least recently have been commonly planted as street and yard trees because they grow very quickly. Unfortunately, they also have very weak wood prone to breaking and so that has um, led to a decrease in their popularity as yard trees. Bark of the silver maple is light colored, forming long peeling plates and flakes. The leaves of the silver maple, again, we're looking at about five lobes, more or less. The sinuses are very deep, so that gives the leaves a um, more finely cut appearance. The leaf bases are U-shaped, and the central lobe kind of tightens in a little bit at the base, so it has a little bit of a waist to it right through here. And they are serrated, like the red maple. And like the red maple, they are whitened or very light green or whitened underneath um, or silvery looking underneath. Um, at this time of year, the twigs are really just brown, although we do see the leaf stems having that reddish color on the upper surface like we saw with the red. Some people report a, a bad smell when the twigs are broken. I'm not really picking up on that, just kind of smells um, like a lot of trees and twigs and leaves do, just sort of green. Here are some of the seeds of the silver maple. You can see that they are quite a bit larger than our other native maples. These are also a little bit uh, worn out and raggedy because like red maple, silver maple releases their seeds in the spring or early summer. Striped maple is generally smaller than most of our native maples. Uh, this is actually a rather large specimen. Um, it's not a timber species because of its typically small size. You can see here the leaves are three-lobed. Very rare, rarely will they get 
um, fifth lobes down at the base. The leaves are finely serrated all along the leaf margins. And it's very typically in this kind of goose footed shape. The twigs are green. Young stems are also greenish with vertical lighter white stripes. And that's how it gets this name. So this tree is maybe even a little bit too big to see it very well, but you can still see those vertical green and white stripes that give striped maple its common name. And here are the seeds. So like the rest of the maples, in pairs with wings. Uh, this one has a U-shaped base. Eastern mountain maple is a small shrubby maple tree growing in the mountains of Virginia with leaves similar to striped maple, but dark unstriped bark and hairy twigs. Here we have a box elder. Box elder is actually a member of the maple family. It has alternative names like ash leaf maple and Manitoba maple. It's called ash leaf maple because it actually has a compound leaf. So all of this is one leaf made up of five leaflets. Um, sometimes there are only three leaves, three leaflets per leaf, like this one. Um, these will confuse you for poison ivy. I have given very wide berth to some box elder seedlings in the past because of these um, three leaflet leaves. But it is a maple. It is opposite, not like poison ivy. So these leaves are coming up opposite. So you'll notice that the young twigs tend to be greenish. Um, and where the leaves or where smaller twigs come off, the leaf scars, that node, they'll tend to come together in a point or sort of like a peak. And that's a good way to tell this tree apart from other maples or from the ashes, um, especially in winter. That's gonna be a persistent um, indicator. Here are some seeds from the box elder. You can see again, they are paired winged um, seeds and they're making sort of a V shape as opposed to some of the other ones that have a more U shaped. Box elder tends to have a gnarly, short, forked kind of growth, which makes it unsuitable for most wood products. It, of course, was historically used to make boxes, hence the name, and the wood is highly prized by wood turners, people who would make bowls and other decorative items, in part because it often will get uh, reddish flecks through it and reddish streaks through it that um, are considered very aesthetically pleasing. So far, we've been talking about our native Virginia maples, but I do have a bonus maple for you. This is the uh, sometimes invasive Norway maple. The mature bark of the Norway maple has a more rigid, um, crisscrossy and vertical structure to it than we've seen on our native maples. Leaves of the Norway maple are five pointed or sometimes even seven lobed and um, lighter green on the back. Similar in many respects to the sugar maple leaf. The lobes are broad. The margins have those occasional large teeth but are not serrated. The tips are perhaps even pointier than on a sugar maple, um, similar in some respects to the lobes of a red oak. The buds are much rounder and less pointed than sugar maple buds. And what's really different about the Norway maple is the seeds. 
So these seeds are much larger, much flatter, even when mature like this, and held almost directly across from each other horizontally. In addition to the helicopter game, um, another thing that we used to do as kids is uh, take one seed, uh, split it in part, take away the actual seed inside, and stick it on our noses. When the leaf stem of the Norway maple is broken, it's supposed to exude a white milky sap. I'm not getting very much here in the late fall, but it is a little bit sticky. Well, those are all the maple trees I have for you today. I'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Dendro, John Peterson for his help. And I'd like to invite all of you back here in two weeks to hear from Bill Worrell with another 15 minutes in the forest.